Hong Kong Disneyland opened as Disney's smallest castle park, and what was included were mostly clones or similar versions of existing Disney attractions. Since its opening, the park is now unrecognizable, as so many changes have been made to enhance the experience. Though we're not sure what the future might hold for the smallest Disney resort, today we will take a look back and forward to see how it has evolved and will continue to do so. Oh boy! Let's start in the beginning. Hong Kong Disneyland is in reclaimed land in Lantau Island and opened in 2005. Since then, it has seen a lot of much-needed investment for different expansions. This is what the park looked like in the opening. As you can tell, it was small. But they had a get-out-of-jail car up their sleeve, because Disney had intentionally left lots of expansion slots for the future. The resort also had two hotels, but the park itself only had three lands. Four, if you consider Main Street as a land, which I do. Adventureland, Fantasyland, Main Street USA, and Tomorrowland were present, but Frontierland was nowhere to be found. Hong Kong Disneyland wasn't very successful, and this time it was Disney's fault. There just wasn't a lot to do. If we compare this brand new resort with Euro Disney in 1992, you can really see the difference in Disney's leadership, as the Parisian resort had the biggest castle park, a shopping area, seven hotels and much more something needed to change. And so, a big $500 million expansion was announced in 2009, containing three separate minilands that would go over the railroad tracks. These were Toy Story, a very similar land to that found in Walt Disney Studios Park in Paris, including the three rides present there, Grizzly Trail, which brought a wild western feel to the park and features an amazing coaster that could be described as if Expedition Everest and Big Thunder Mountain had a baby, and at last Mystic Point, which would soon have what's probably Disney's best trackless ride, Mystic Manor. The work started in 2009, and just around the corner in 2011, the Miniland started to open. First was Toy Story in that year, then Grizzly Trail in 2012, and finally Mystic Point in 2013. They proved to be successful, and the park footprint grew quite a lot with them. A few years go by, and new expansion plans are unveiled to the public, with a $1.4 billion price tag. This would include two new lands, Herondale The World of Frozen, Stark Expo based on the Marvel movies, and a brand new castle. The first phase of the expansion was to reuse a part of Tomorrowland by building a new ride called Iron Man Experience and re-theme Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters to Ant-Man and the Wasp Nano Battle. Iron Man opened in January of 2017 and using a modified Star Tours ride vehicle, guests travel around Hong Kong with Iron Man on their side to stop the evil Hydra from stealing a giant arc reactor. The Ant-Man ride opened in March 2019, being the second big change of this new expansion. Before going over to Frozen, the Castle of Magical Dreams was the third attraction to open as part of the expansion, and did so in November 2020. With it also came a brand new nighttime show, designed and created specifically for the castle. The new centerpiece of the park pays tribute to all the Disney princesses, and was supposed to mark a new start for Hong Kong Disneyland. But unfortunately, it didn't start very well, as Covid appeared and China was very heavily affected by the pandemic. Even so, Disney didn't stop the construction, but this had to be very slowed down, especially with frozen land. So, Arendelle, originally supposed to be open by 2021 and located between It's a Small World and Toy Story. This new land invites guests into the magical kingdom from the famous Frozen movies. And like in Paris, this land will have two attractions, Frozen Ever After, the same one that's being built in Walt Disney Studios, and Wandering Oaken Sliding Sleighs, a one-of-a-kind roller coaster that will take guests on a journey through Arendelle. Several shops and restaurants will also be available in the land, opening for the public just next year, in the second half of 2023. During the last D23, Disney showed a new look into several things coming to Hong Kong's newest land, including ride vehicles, 
from the roller coaster. These look very detailed and unique. I'm definitely interested to see how this turns out. And the boats for the water-based ride Frozen Ever After, which compared to Epcot's are huge, with something like 30% more capacity per boat. And lastly, some of the costumes that cast members will wear. Looking at construction, it's finally moving full steam ahead and already looks amazing, with several theming elements already fully done. I can't wait to see how this turns out, especially as we will have a very similar land in Paris. Moving on to what was supposed to be the last part of the multi-year expansion, the Avengers Quinjet attraction. Now, if this rings any bells, it's because you are aware that something very similar was supposed to be built as the e-ticket attraction in the Avengers Campus in California Adventure. The pitch was that guests were recruited by the Avengers for a mission and board a Quinjet that's on its way to battle in Wakanda. When they arrive, something goes wrong, and the vehicle explodes, leaving everyone separated from each other, while facing the enemy side by side with the heroes themselves. While Disney has been very quiet on the Hong Kong version for the past few years, we did get an update from the American version, as it seems that it has been scrapped. There is only speculation for why this happened, but it looks that Imagineering was having troubles with the proposed ride system. Since one of the versions has been cancelled, we can only assume that the weather one was as well. But this isn't the end of the story, no 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 no. During this D23, Kevin Feige went on stage to present the new ride that will replace the Quinjet attraction in California. Guests will now board what seems to be either a trackless ride or an enhanced motion vehicle, or AMV for short. If I were to bet, it would be the second option, as the car looks very similar to the one from what's probably the best 3D dark ride of all time, The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. It can be found in Universal's Islands of Adventure. Characters from all over the multiverse will join the story as the heroes and guests face down with a new supervillain, King Thanos. With a great beard, by the way. Back in Hong Kong, in 2016, Autopia closed for good, and the demolition started just a couple of years later, making way for the huge new part of the land. Using this concept art, you can see what was already built, Ant-Man and Iron Man and what's still to be built. Now, as I said, Disney hasn't said anything about the Hong Kong ride for quite some time now, but I believe that they will move on with the project eventually, and bring a similar ride to the one being built in California. What's next? That's a good question. When Disney finishes all the planned expansions, what will they do next? I'll give you a couple of options, starting with more expansions to the park. There are still a lot of room to expand on, from huge backstage areas that could be shrunk down and converted into new offerings, such as this one between Main Street and Grizzly Trail, or the absolutely huge one with lots of space around Small World and Tomorrowland. On top of these, they could also take a note from Tokyo Disney Sea and expand into this huge lot by passing over or under the street. Now, for a second park, I can't see that happening very soon. Not because of the lack of space, but because of lack of funds. And the government. As the supposedly second gate expansion area has been converted into a quarantine center, which gives this rather strange feeling. On one side there's Disneyland, and on the other there's this. But with the pandemic calming down and China starting to lift some of the pandemic rules, this location could eventually return to its original purpose, and one day bring even more joy and magic to the ones that visit. Have you ever visited Hong Kong Disneyland? And what are you most excited for coming to the resort? Let me know down below so we can have a chat. Make sure to join our community by subscribing, following us on Twitter, and entering our Discord. And now, as always, thank you for watching, and that's a wrap.